with her four daughters. My mom is on the right of my grandma. On the left is my Tua Yi, that's the eldest daughter. Behind my mother is my youngest auntie, Dr. Yeo Guat Hong. And behind, uh, beside her is my third auntie. Um, she, is, she was, okay. Um, well, she was the PA to the last Lord President of the Supreme Court. Okay? Yes. yes, my mom is the one in white. She actually was wearing a kabaya rinda, a light apple green kabaya rinda with white lace. Oh, you can't see. Auntie Lily, do you still have this kabaya? No. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry. Uh, are you cut? Okay. Can you, yeah, okay, okay now, madam. Okay, so this presentation covers three eras, knowing your past, embracing the present, and charting the future. So I'm talking about tradition dictated what was worn, fashion is a trend now, and creation will be what the future brings. And for the purpose of this presentation, I'm focusing on the straight Chinese ladies of Penang, my hometown. So if you hear me speaking Hokkien, you know I'm from Penang. But I've lived in KL since 1966. That old, huh? Their fashion styles actually, it's only slightly different from the southern Peranakans uh, of Malacca and Singapore. Very slight. Who are the Nonias and what do they wear? Nonyas are female descendants of early Chinese who settled in the colonial straight settlements. They created a hybrid culture, a localized a lifestyle of the affluent and anglophile with influences from Thailand, Burma and Indonesia. What my ancestors wore. That photograph, that's my paternal great-great-grandmother. Can you see? That portrait of my paternal local born, she was local born, great-great-grandmother taken on her birthday shows her in a gorgeous silk embroidered shou yi with a matching long skirt. Her hair was in a top knot and you can see three um, this clearly visible chama happens. Okay? Uh, she wears a beautiful bintang brooch pinned on the cleavage of her jacket and on her feet, what appears to be kaso kodong. You call it kaso tongkong? Tongkang? Yes, I think the southerners call it kaso tongkang. Okay, we call it kaso kodong. Her family had settled in the close, uh, coastal village of Nibong Tabal which is now mainland Penang. So they've been here for, uh, in, in Malaya for a long, long time. Many Chinese families had settled along the coastal regions of Kedah um, long before Penang was ceded to the British East India Company in 1786. The, the Strait Settlements were formed in 1827, uh, sorry, 26. So, um, an old photograph of my in-laws, okay? If you see the circled, the, the matriarch in the middle, she is in a dark colored Chinese sampu, Mandarin blouse with frog buttons and loose white pants, inconspicuous um, jewelry. The elder ladies are in Teng Sa, Teng Sa is Hokkien for Bacu Panjang. Okay? Um, and the young maidens then were in Chinese dresses. Can you see on that side? And this? Yeah, they are, that is what you call Kun. Kun. It's a Hokkien. Eh? Uh, blouses with trousers or skirts. And they are wearing lots of jewelry. Um, my late father in law is the little boy sitting on the mat there. He was born in 1910. So can you imagine how old this photograph is? My, my father-in-law was born in 1910. That's him sitting on the floor. So that's great-great-grandmother on my in-law's side, on my in-laws. 
So another photo, the next photograph, my maternal great grandparents with some of their children. Um, a photograph of my great grandmother. She was born in uh, 1860. She lived to 100 years old. I attended her funeral. I was a little girl, so that's my great great grandmother. Um, you can see her in a dark batik. Um, can you see a dark batik uh, with small floral uh, a pattern pensa? Um, Rosie, can can you see this? This is what it is like. Uh, this didn't belong to her, but this is that same uh, age. Uh, put in the hanger. Yeah, this is a teng sa with batik, small batik prints, and that is what was worn during her era, early 1900s. Yes, she was okay. Can you see it's very old? So these are the dark, the old ladies used to wear that very dark. It's batik, yeah? It's batik prints. Indonesian batik prints. Um that you see her, her youngest daughter is also wearing the same style, black, dark colored. And then um, the two elder girls, the two elder girls. They are in uh, floral translucent tengsa over white tesa. This this is some this is something like this. Can you see? These are very old, so I have to. I'm a hoarder. So uh, it's, it's original as it was, left behind starch like this. Okay, all this were as it was. This is where the younger ladies are wearing, the two of them. Okay. And then um, I'll, I'll show you the Tesa later. Then uh, the next photograph, my maternal grandmother in a checkered teng sa. Okay. Um, both my grandmothers, um, they wore English checkered fabrics, um, also those from India and Sulawesi, uh, Indonesia. And then there was a fine transparent English floral voil uh, or German organdy. They are very, um, this two, this two. So this, this actually belonged to grandmother, okay? It actually belonged to her. These two, and it's well starched, okay? Um, this, is, this, is, um, this is of candy fabric for... This is of candy fabric, if you don't know what they look like, this is what the nonyas in Penang would be wearing. Very fine very thin and very transparent. What do they wear inside? But you can, uh, but they sound the white, okay? You, you, I'll show you the white uh, here. Okay, I'll show you later. Okay, so now you have got, do you, you, do you, can you see what grandma was wearing? This is a checkered one with the tesa uh, inside, okay? Um, okay, this is Tesa. This I made. Okay, this is what a Tesa looks like. This is what they will wear inside. Uh, my grandmother's uh, actually had gold buttons where you detach it. When you want to wash, you detach the gold buttons. Uh, but I, I just made it just to show you what it looks like. And then they wear the kabaya panjang over it. Okay? So, but my... Photograph? Okay. Okay. 
so um, my paternal grandmother actually wore songket from Palembang for her wedding. This is my father's pre um, um, parents on their wedding day, one of the 12 days. So she is actually wearing one of the, what did I say? 12 days. Yes, her time is 12 days. Now we have truncated it to three and then it's one day. Her time is 12 days. It's early, early 1900. Okay, my father was born in 19, uh, my father was the, the second son and he was born in 1917. So this was early 1900. Okay, so you can see she's actually wearing a songket, songket from Palembang and a nice, ah, look at the jewelry, my goodness, how heavy, how many pounds. Okay, so now, um, are you okay with that? The next picture everybody has been asking. That picture. That's my grandmother, my mother's mother. I was a little girl when she died. Uh, so I knew her. And that's my mom in a white kabaya rinda. Okay. And um, my mom was born in 1918. So she's, if she's alive today, she'll be more than 100 years old. And um, she, she was born after World War I, so, but she never wore the Deng Sa. It had gone out of fashion. So that's her in the Kabar. This was um, after I was born. She was already wearing um, Te Sa. I mean, sorry, uh, Kabaya Rinda. It was an originally apple green Kabaya Rinda white yeah. and Pekalongan Sarong um, my grandma actually it, her, uh, she's wearing a, a floral um, kabaya and that's uh, Sarong is um, Panjang. that's my Tua'i in a floral kabaya with very simple um, in Hokkien we say baki but it's just your scallops, okay? The simple biku or whatever you call it here. And that's my third auntie. So she retired as the uh, personal assistant to the Lord President. And that one is Dr. Yeo Guat Hong, my mother's youngest uh, sister. All of them have passed away. So my mother, uh, like I said, she never went, she never wore Teng Sa because it had gone out of style by her time. She actually wore some food and uh, frocks. She was from Light Street Convent, Penang. Any of y'all know Light Street Convent, Penang? Yes, it's a very old school in Penang, Light Street Convent. So she was a student then in the early 1920s. So when she, when she went to school, it was like some food or frocks. For her wedding, she actually wore um, a Western style satin silk gown. I've seen that because she kept it. Um, and I had a two veil uh, which disintegrated by the time I saw it. Um, and she wore a floor length chong sam. Okay, um, that was in 1941. Um, but my mother was actually, uh, she was already wearing the sarong kabaya um, before I was born. I was her third child. Nonyas didn't always wear saru kabayas. There was a whole spectrum of attire. Um, as seen in the picture ab above, um, my grandmother and her four daughters, um, one of my younger aunties in Chongsam, the other in Western frock. See, doesn't mean that if you're a nonya, you have to wear kabaya. Okay? So, um, what they wore, um, the, the picture also so shows some different kabaya styles, okay, as you can see, uh, sarongs, hairstyles, jewelry, footwear, and delicate white handkerchiefs. If you have noticed in Penang, the, the ladies, when they are photographed, they are with delicate, uh, uh, super, no, no, my, the earlier pictures, they actually hold delicate white handkerchiefs. And in those days, it was Egyptian cotton. Pyramid, the brand 
from two toes, that's Egyptian cotton. So no big, big, you don't see that unless there are those that eat uh, Syria and when you're taking a photograph, which is all studio pose and all that, they don't show that big handkerchiefs. You know, you see a lot of the Kabaya uh, ladies in Kabaya Panjang, you have big, you don't see that in my, any of the photographs of my ancestors. So, um, I was going to show you the um, gold and silver thread couching slippers. Um, yeah. Open. This was what my mother made. She had to make six pairs before she got married. A pair for herself and the bridegroom. Okay, before the bridegroom was even found because her a marriage was uh, match made. Okay, and uh, um, a pair each for her in-laws and a pair each for her parents. So she had to make six pairs. This was what my mother made. No, in, in, you just make the muka first. Ah, you, you, when you're marriageable age, you start making the muka first. So this one belonged to my grandmother, the old lady, the grandmother. So I kept it, and it's that old. Yes, be careful, ah, it will come. Um, yeah. Yes, I I tried to learn this. Um, but my mom says there is gold thread and all that no longer available. Uh, not in Malaysia, probably in other countries. You go to Vietnam, I think Cambodia and other countries, they still do it, but not the style that my mother made. Okay? So, uh, it's, it's very fragile, huh? please be careful. Uh, so, that technique is lost. Um, nobody makes it now and nobody wears it anymore. Okay? A bit, but beaded slippers became popular in the 1950s. Okay, beaded slippers. So my mom's time, they were wearing this. It's beaded slippers became popular in the 1950s. But shortly after, all the bohemian beads that you're talking about, you know, all those old beads, yes, um, you can't find them anymore. And that's my mother's uh, beaded slipper. And that is the... No. Sufong has, Sufong has it. It's with Sufong. So that's, you look at how, how color is so bright. These are bohemian beads. And it, it's not potong, huh? and it's opaque. So honestly, if you tell me potong beads are actually flaws, beads are supposed to be round. Okay? Anyway, moving on. Um, after that, uh, you can't find those beads. So what did, were the ladies wearing? Suede, leather, it could be anything. And later we had synthetic um, uh, fabric, whatever, for, for their shoes. Um, the, moving on, crochet. Uh, you remember mom and grandma doing crochet? They were very good with uh, handwork. And in the olden days, they make chair bags or every, anything like that for crochet in the house. But particularly, they crochet wool as shawls for themselves. Because you know, our kabayas are very uh, thin and transparent. And old ladies, by the time they go out in the evenings when it rains, it gets very cold, all the bones are aching. So what do they do? They crochet wool shawls. So if you remember, great-grandmother would have worn a shawl made of crochet wood, wool, that was it. People don't think about it now, but that was how the old ladies kept themselves warm with the crochet shawl. Okay. But the sarongs um, were then either tulis or chap. In those days, uh, they didn't do printing, uh, Indonesian. So I have got uh, mostly from Lasam. Or uh, that's what Penang people like to buy, lasap or pekalungan. Okay, and this is a vintage one. It is very fragile. It's hand drawn. Very fragile. It's every single dot, and it's very tiny. And it's so smooth by now. Actually, it's you feel it's like silk. It's cotton, but it is very fine. 
And would you believe it when I was a little girl, I used to ask, how much did it cost, huh? You know how much then? Handsome princely price, $35. Oh, $100, you can buy three dollars, huh? That time, okay? So it's all handmade, every single dot. Okay, this is very old. John, are we here? You know Batates, right? Yes. So it's either this, this is very old, and I also have another one, which is also Tulis. Um, it, it, it's also Tulis, uh, rock upside down. This is actually a Tuaha for mourning, the third year, and it is very fine. The, the workmanship is very fine, okay? So, um, some nonias, um, but very few, actually use batik lepas. Oh, oh okay, uh, I wanted to say, this, 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 can you see the difference? This is batik chap, stem new, okay? What I'm wearing, what I'm wearing is chap. So make sure you buy from the right people and the good quality and it looks good. John, you keep on saying my sarong is nice. I'm telling you it's chop and very cheap. If you know me, it's very cheap. So all these wrong side up, the, the other side up. No, no, no. Yeah, the flowers, yeah. So can you see, it's irises. These are irises. <laughs> so this is also chop, stem, huh? okay? And, um, and uh, okay, this is uh, they also wear kan lepas. Um, uh, in Penang, strangely, we call it selendang. Uh, you call it normally kan lepas, kan panjang, batik panjang, right? And look at this one. Yes, yes, that way. Uh, this is a batik kan lepas. It's elephants. Can you see? It's elephants. It's old. Are they lepas? That one is old. Mm, just yeah. This one is new. This is batik lepas, but it's new. And hand drawn. Uh, this is bang biru, meaning that's red and blue. And look at that. It's a copy from the old uh, batik, but it's still hand drawn. And this is kind lepas. That means it's very long. You have to go around. Okay. And um, there's the other type that we call. Pagisore. Okay? Pagisore. I've got one here. In Penang, we call it Siang Malam. One saro, you can wear as two. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this, you hold the other end. You hold this one. And, yeah. Can you see? There's one sarong, sorry. Can you see? It's one sarong, but you wear two. So this is the siang, the lighter color, and the malam. So you turn it around, upside down, and you can have two sarongs. This is vintage, and this is also tuaha. And actually, in Indonesia, they, they, don't, they don't follow like us. Lah. They don't have what we call tuaha. They just make it because they love it. But we pick it up as tuaha saro for ourselves, the third year. Okay? So I want to show you something which is also siang malam. Just hold it here. This is um, a reproduction specially made for me. And uh, this is uh, called hokokai, which was made during the Japanese occupation. Um, Japanese word. And it is also siang malam. This side it was here. Yeah, this side. Yeah, you hold that. You let go this side. Can you can you see? Okay, one side is the darker one is the malam, and that's siang. And this is uh, hokokai with the Japanese uh, cherry blossom. During the Japanese occupation of Java, they were making this type of batik. Okay. So uh, our Malaysian butter industry developed much later. Um, particularly the Nonias um, weren't really um, buying our Malaysian Kelantan, Trigano batiks for, you know, uh, 
to wear for very formal functions. Uh, these these sarongs are not what you wear every day. Okay, um, it's better quality than uh, most that you would wear daily. But still, okay, and um, and in in Penang, the northern people, we actually call moa. We don't use the word sarong. We call it moa. Okay, and uh, also uh, it's a ho it's a Hokkien dialect, and uh, kebaya nonya. You go to Penang in my time. You say kebaya nonya, nobody will understand you. Okay, it's pua teng te. Pua teng te is Hokkien. Pua means half. Teng means long. Te means short. So baju panjang, baju pendek. You are in between. So, so when you say pua teng te, everybody knows you are talking about the kebaya. If you say kebaya, nobody knows what you're talking about. The Hokkien ladies would know what you're talking about. Um, this is also um, kebaya, I mean, sorry, sorry, tulis, also old. This is very classic, lah. you know. Mum used to use all this. This is all tulis also. Uh, but very old already lah. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to gelang kaki. Do you know what gelang kaki is? Rosin, can you open? Uh, no. Any of you remember grandma wearing gelang kaki? Yes. Gelang kaki. Nobody wears them now, right? Yes? This is what your grandmother would be wearing, gelang kaki. Yes? And um, um, young, well, children used to use rantai kaki. You know what the rantai kaki means? The one with the chain and the little bells that go ping, 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 ping. And you are in Penang. No, but no, lady, no young girl who has reached puberty will be seen wearing a rantai kaki. Once you reach puberty, no more. You don't want to have that clinking clinking sound following you. Uh, a lot of cultures actually has a meaning to it. Whether you're Indian culture or Nonya in Penang, nobody wears that. It signifies something else. Okay, anybody knows what it signifies? Lady uh, from the oldest profession in the world. You are advertising yourself. So, yes? So, after puberty, no more. And I have um, Chucho Sango, um, which. No, this. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one open. Chucho Sango, the hairpins in Penang, we wear five or seven. Not three, Malacca, we have three. Penang, we have five or seven. Uh, I'm showing you just the simple one without any stones. They are different sizes. Okay? So they, they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And if they are going out for a very formal occasion, having a nice photograph taken, then it will be jeweled with diamonds, whatever. Uh, daily, they probably wear like this without any um, stones. Uh, but then when you're in mourning, then you have that in silver. Okay, you cannot wear gold if you're in mourning, so it will be in silver. And Penang style, five or seven, not three. Um, okay, we will move on to the next. Um, oh, oh, I forgot to show you this. Krosang, we call it Krosang To. Uh, it's meant for Kabaya Pancha. Uh, we, we don't see that anymore. Uh, most of the time we will see uh, uh, Krosang uh, Rantai. Most of you are wearing Krosang Rantai, right? Yes, but Jessica and I, we have got Krosang To. In, 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 I think in the South we call it Krosang Serong, eh? right? So it's Ibu. And Anna. This was actually meant for Kabaya Panjang. So these are vintage. 
uh, you, you normally wear the three, okay? So that's, that's when we're out of style, when Kabai Panjang went out of style. And now, um, okay, uh, the fashion changed drastically after World War II. Um, baby boomers like me, our fashions changed completely after the Second World War. Um, and we were westernized, we were influenced by the westerners. Um, I grew up, I, really, I never wore sarong when I grew up, um, but my mother did. My mother continued wearing her sarong, her, uh, her kabayas, her, her blouses, until she passed away in uh, 1991. Um, she, she actually went through the whole evolution. You know, as she started with Kabaya Renda. Kabaya Renda, do you know what this is, right? This is Kabaya Renda. It's got lace applique. It's Kabaya Renda. This is what she started wearing. Okay? And then they had uh, simple things like this, um, with simple scallops. Just simple. These are all old fabrics. Uh, just uh, simple scallops. Okay? Um, um, Okay, now my okay. Um, well, after that, of course, uh, she also went through the what what we wear now, very elaborate uh, designs. You know, so it went, she went through the whole evolution of kabayas during her lifetime. Um, 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 have you heard the word berkeban? Yes. Yeah, nonyas, what they do when they come out from the bathroom after their shower? Well, come on, bare shoulders, uh, but never out of the house. Ah. It's all, all only in the privacy of their home. So that's how they would use the tubular sarong to come on. Yes? Um, there was a, then there was a period in the 19... I'm giving you history. I hope you are not getting bored. I'm giving you a history lesson. In the 1960s, are you okay? Yeah. So in the 1960s, my mother, she decided to wear just white kabayas with colorful sarongs. Didn't matter. So it was like, um, whether is um, I'm just showing, this is hers actually, Grupa Lace. Uh, you remember, yeah, Grupia Lace. This is my mom's. See, just simple scallops. And then this was, uh, this is mine actually, it's eyelet lace. Do you know what eyelet lace is? The holy, holy thing? Yeah, and, and those that has got um, uh, scallops at the bottom, we call it broader angle. See, it's the holy, holy ones. And this belongs to mom also. Corded, corded lace. Can you open it? Cotton corded lace. There's cord, the, 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 the pattern. See, there are so many different types of laces. So mum went through all this. You just wore different colours, but it's that when you look at her, she's always wearing white. Why? But that's what she chose. All white, but she kept on changing her sorrow. Um, then you can see that it's only little scallops, they don't do much, just little scallops at the back. Um, but whatever it was, you can see they are very muted colours. Um, uh, they, 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 the, the ladies then wore very muted colours, very pastel shades, whether you're young or old at that time. Uh, it was only in the uh, 1950s that there was a shift. And people started, the ladies started ordering um, very strong colours, contrasting patterns. Um, but still, it was still very tasteful and elegant. Um, see, this, this one is a nylon lace. My mother never liked this. It's nylon, synthetic. She didn't like this. It's still lace. Very pretty, but well, she, her skin, she didn't like it anyway. Uh, then this is what I meant, 1950s, my goodness, look, chili red. This kabaya actually belonged to my third auntie just now, the one that was uh, the, the per, uh, um, personal assistant. Look, Rosie, can you show up? Yeah, this belonged to my aunt. 
1950. Is this the one the actress wrote? Yes. Yes. I, it, I, I, loaned, I, loaned, I loaned this to Pearlie Chua when she went, to, uh, went for the award, the Golden Horses Award. Golden Horses. Yeah, in Taiwan, Golden Horses. So I loaned it to her. Yeah, she's won it for one of the Emily of Emerald Hill uh, in Singapore. So it fitted her. But look at how it's lasted so many years. It's still very pretty, pretty right? That was the sound, very chilly red. Okay. Um, but now we have moved forward from the pastel shades. I'm still stuck there. Okay, I'm still stuck there. Um, most of us have moved forward to very bright, you know, a blazing, uh, a ride of blazing colors. Uh, sometimes garish. Well, you can paint the town red, okay? Let's go dancing in a nice, colorful, something very nice. Um, I actually grew up wearing frocks and during the hippie, uh, old enough to, to remember, the hippie and the disco era. What did I, what did I wear? Mini skirts, bell bottoms, t-shirts, shorts, jeans, Anything goes. Nonya, I'm still a nonya. But it doesn't matter what I wore. Right? It was only my mother's generation that kept on at it. You know? Uh, wearing. So it was uh, like a um, whole generation that skipped wearing sarong kabayas. Uh, well, I, I see some my age. Huh? So we remember. We never wore sarong kabaya. Nobody wore. Um, but if the occasion, um, you know, if, if it's, we need to wear, we will still wear. Okay? We, we just don't wear it as a, what, you know, it's not a, 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 a attire of choice. Um, I actually wore a Western ivory colored gown for my wedding. Okay? And um, I recall wearing my first. Sarung Kabaya in 1980s. Old already, huh? Had three children, <laughs> had two children already by then. And, and as an army wife, I found that I couldn't even wear my Sarung Kabaya or my Chong Sam to the Istana. My husband was going to receive his awards from the Agong. And Istana protocol says, my Chong Sam, floor length, six inches slip. How am I going to walk? And my kabaya, it has to cover my buttocks fully. Who, which Tonya wears sarung kabaya like that? I gave up. So I went to the Istana wearing uh, Batik Lukis Kabaro, Malay Batik Lukis Kabaro with slender. Um, My parents, yes, yes, my parents' marriage in 1941 was arranged. It was a match. Huh? Um, their wedding by then had truncated. You know, the olden days was 12 days. I don't know, some people say longer, but as far as I know, my, my uh, in law, us, I don't know, those, those days they tell me 12 days. But some people say more, I don't know. I only know 12 days. But by mom's time, it was a real three days. Okay? And um, um, even though it was three days, they still kept the, the rites and rituals. So uh, there was one that was that's very important, the rites of passage to adulthood, Jiao Tao. You all know that ceremony? Yes, the eve, the eve of your wedding night, you go through a, a, a ceremony. And um, my mother, and my parents actually kept the white samfu that was specially made for that uh, uh, ceremony. Jiang Tao, they had to wear a white samfu. My, my, the, the bride and the groom, both of them, when they go through the ceremony. And we kept that, and that was kept until uh, they died. We used their, uh, them, uh, uh, that uh, 
as undergarment. So my mum, in 50 years after her wedding, uh, 1991, we cremated her in that. And in 2007, my father, we did the same thing for him. Put on the chiao tao sa, uh, and then put on his, his, his clothes. Okay? But I chose, I personally chose not to go through that ceremony myself. Because um, this is a sacred um, ritual, right? And to make that white baju, you can't simply go and buy. It has to be brand new. You cannot use somebody else's. It has to be brand new and there are uh, protocol and etiquette to make that baju. And after that, you do not do anything without it. Keep it until you die. If you cannot fit in, put it in the coffin. That's what old people did. So I don't have one. No need to worry, yeah, Sifong? <laughs> okay, sorry, got distracted. Um, okay, I'm going to talk now from marriage to mourning. Okay, when somebody dies. So in the um, in 1950s, okay, um, my grandparents died. Um, my paternal, uh, maternal was much later. And in 1950s, I remember wearing mourning clothes to school. And it was like three long years of mourning. My pinafore, I was from the convent, it was blue with white. My mother made black pinafore for me. For one whole year, I was wearing black pinafore on white. So one year, black and white. Second year, um, Something like this, okay? Something like this, your sarong, if you're wearing sarong, black and white. This is new, but I'm just telling you how it looks like. Tuaha, huh? Black and white. Okay? Okay. Second year, this is very fragile. Yeah, it's old, it's fragile. Um, this is blue, second year. Okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And this is third year. With green. Then traditions change. 100 days. My goodness, so long. I have to mourn. And then it went down to 49 days. You know what we say? Chit chit. 7 7, 49 days. And now, immediately after the funeral, everybody is in red already. Lah. What's in the heart will do. Lah, huh? No need to show off. Huh? Right? But that was tradition. Okay? So I'm telling you, uh, that was tradition. I, I remember shortly after my husband passed away in 2008, um, I mean, there was a function I had to go. So what I did was I wore a white kabaya and uh, megamundong, tujuh lapis, all the different types of grey colours, different shades, seven shades of grey, megamundong with a white. So. I was still respectful. So nowadays, like I said, nobody bothers already. After funeral, I took a lah. Okay. Oh, oh I, uh, by the way, um, my father pa uh, passed away when he was 90. So no mourning. Everything was red. Chinese custom. Yes, yes? Uh, I didn't bring up. Yes, I have. Black. You know, I'm talking about it. Um, I don't know whether any of you remember when the Thai king of Thailand, he passed away in 2000, um, what year was that? Um, just, just one month before the last Phuket convention. And we had all prepared our clothes. And what did we do? One month and that was Phuket convention. And you know the Thai people, they mourn for one year, the whole nation, everywhere you go, everybody is black and white. So, so out of respect, most of us, most of us wore black and white or blue or any of those Tuaha colors. I made black, uh, full black kabaya and I also made black kabaya with white embroidery. And I made, a, uh, I always have lah, 
completely white papayas. So I switched. So I, I, I didn't have to change my whole wardrobe, especially for the two days convention, which we are having 2024 Phuket convention at the end of November 15 to 17. Any of you all want to go? We are ready. Tell Celia or Albert. Okay? Phuket convention. Are you sponsor me lah? <laughs> flight, flight, um, plus uh, one thousand four for the three days. Oh, you know, Sufong has been there, and so did my grandson for the last Phuket convention. Uh, for the earlier Phuket convention, they're very good in Phuket convention. They're very good compared to local. I'm telling you, I've been there twice. They're very good. So anyway, coming back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, 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 um, John, John, uh, are you looking for a black or just? No, I tell you. Um, okay, uh, my mother. Uh, I remember in 1950s. Okay, she actually wore completely black sarong and uh, uh, kabaya or kabaya lipat, huh? It's just folded in Kabali part. And we always keep, so my mother-in-law in her 80s, she attended the funeral of her uh, fa okay, father-in-law's second wife. She ducked out her old black. She is so old herself. She ducked out her old Kabali part, black and black sarong. We always keep we always keep our morning clothes in the house because you never know who is going to pass going going to go. So we always have clothes ready. Oh, those are, days are different from now. Go and buy t-shirt lah, you know. And you know, no, 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 no. Those days we actually keep our black um, kabayas at our, our morning clothes. You do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. Somebody can just, you know. So. Um, some people may still have, but my mom's, my mother-in-law's, I don't know where they are now. Lah. Okay? So yes, uh, uh, you can make new ones, easy, but the old ones, you have to ask, lah, ask around, maybe it will turn up. If I hear one, I'll let you know. You're looking for it? Yeah. That's why you see, a lot of the sarongs here, and clothes, I'm showing you, it's uh, the, the Tuaha ones, they are kept, they don't wear it so often, so they keep it, that's why you can still find a lot of Tuaha Muas, because it's kept, you don't know when the next occasion, you don't use it like normal until it, 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 it's, 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 uh, 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 so, so it's still, uh, 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 okay, uh, uh, moving on, yes, for sale or not? No, no, no. Oh, John, not for sale. Should make a sale. Oh, yeah, yeah. We not need to lah. Um. So moving on. Okay. 1960s. Do you remember this Kutubaru? No Kutubaru Kelantan, ah, please. It's Kutubaru. It's Indonesian. Take. This is what you remember. This lady, the singer Anika Grono. Burung kaka tua, oh Malaysia, Leno. Well, she, be, she made it famous in Malaysia in the 1960s, wearing this type of kaba, uh, kabaya, okay, kutubaru. And uh, it's very popular with the young because you don't need to use. Um, uh, are, are, we, are, we, are we okay? Can you hear me? Okay, so you, there's no need for you to use croissant and no embroidery, just a little bit of pleats in front and then they wear very tight-fitting um, sarongs. So that's, that's Kutubaru. And then um, in the 1970s, um, they started wearing but, uh, prints, batik, uh, top and bottom, like the uh, air hostesses. Garuda, Malaysian Airlines, Kabayas, but 
No, Singapore pure Melmain is a different quality. Frenchman, not Kabaya. French style, French designer. This is still has the, the iconic Kabaya look with the fold and all that. So it's using uh, mostly prints. Like these are prints. Um, so that, that, that was very popular at one time. Okay? It, um, and then, um, I don't know whether any of you remember this. The first Peranakan convention was held in 1988 in Penang. It was started in Penang. And the ladies, uh, my mother's time, huh? okay? Um, very few of them wore sarong kabayas because most of the uh, kabaya makers have retired. Um, it wasn't fashionable. So they just, okay, la, nobody wants to buy. We close shop. La. So it was just the few ladies that were still, um, um, you know, who were giving business to a few authentic kabaya makers. So it was no longer fashionable. We are talking 1988. Huh? And we had the first Purana Khan convention in Penang. Um, okay, Sufong, that's my daughter. She actually wore a red embroidered kabaya um, paired with batik saro. Uh, her saro had actually gold paint highlights and beaded slippers for her pre nuptial dinner for her wedding. Shall I tell them what year? <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So that's that's her. She married. Um, yeah, pictures. <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. She still fits in the same kabaya. She can still fit in the same kabaya. What she wore, she can still fit in. And I actually had it made with Auntie Kim in Penang. I had it made with Auntie Kim in Penang. Um, so she she's. Well, that and okay, what I'm going to say next what we wear does not necessarily define us culturally, but some garments are iconic of specific eras. Not all who wear sarongs are nonyas, and not all nonyas wear sarong. Do you agree with me? Yes, yes, and that was tradition. Huh? So what is the fashion trend now? Now, when Datin Sri Endon had her Kabaya exhibition and her book launch in 2004, that kind of revived, you know, everybody started. You know, she was the deputy, wife of the deputy prime minister then. Okay? And then in 2008, Singapore, they started Little Nonya, the TV series, and everybody was like, okay, you know? So, so uh, that revived the, the trend. And of course, uh, when people started wearing kabaya, the industry, everything that goes with the kabayas, you know, the people who make them, the people who make sarongs, it, 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 um, it, it promoted, you know, um, it helped... Uh, uh, revive the industry. Okay, how many will know this? PPBNKLS, the organizers for today's function, was actually registered in July of 2008. Okay, but we were we were officially launched in October of 2009, and at that time, many of us wore sarong kabaya for the ceremony. It was held at the auditorium of the uh, Museum Negara. Uh, the government representative who came uh, to officiate, she was senator, I can't remember her name, Hing something. Um, she wore a sarong kabaya. So from then on, whether you're nonya or not, wearing sarong kabaya became trendy. You don't have to be a nonya, you know. You can always wear the kabaya. It became very trendy then. Um, we actually repurpose kabayas as jackets. A lot of them, us do, we do, right? We inherited a kabaya. Oh, you know, it doesn't fit anymore. What do we do with our kabaya? We wear it over what the Europeans like to say, the little black dress. You go out for evening, get a nice dress, put it on. It's a jacket and there you are. Or you can wear it over your power suits. Those of you who are corporate, 
people. Um, you can wear it with skirts, you can wear it with pants, even jeans, right? Um, the iconic kabaya actually has not evolved. It's still the same. It's just that we repurposed it, okay? Uh, wearing something with the lower garment. So it's, the kabaya is still the same, it hasn't changed. Many kabayas don't even, I'm uh, sorry, many nonyas don't even own a kabaya. And some don't even want to wear it. It's fine. You're still a nonya, you don't have to wear a kabaya. I'll tell people, why do you say that, you know, you have to be a nonya to wear a kabaya? No. I've just shown you what my grandmothers, my aunties were wearing, not only kabayas. Okay? Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Batets are still produced locally and in Indonesia. Batet prints um, are cheap. But you must know what you wear la, buy. La, hmm? Look at this. That's a print. Huh? Believe it or not, that's a print. And it's a very good innovation. Both sides are printed. And this was actually won an award from Indonesia. Unfortunately, the collaboration between Mr. Lim and Mr. Hartono, it fell through. It's no longer available. It doesn't matter if you turn it inside out. Uh, uh, David, can you just help? If you turn it inside out, it's exactly the same. See how good in this print. If you look at it closely, it is it's print, huh? John, you remember me wearing one day something like this? And it's actually print. So if you don't want to buy kabaya, handan and all that, these are, if you know where to find them, they are available. And you look, this is a replica of the old, old kabayas. Very nice, the peonies and all that, the color schemes, they are actually prints, okay? Um, so we have um, prints that you can buy, but vintage jewelry is hard to come by and very expensive. Uh, it's no longer profitable for jewelers to create new designs as there's no demand. What are the jewelers going to do? They create something nice for you, but you're not willing to pay that price. Gold price has gone ridiculously high, right? So, but we are fortunate, we have costume jewelry. And today, I invited a vendor, especially for you all. Prices have been slashed at, unless there's a price tag, everything has been slashed down, especially for you. Tomorrow, no, the price will be different. So he's at the back, um, he's going to give you, if you, like, if you see something that you like, uh, because we only brought in um, very limited pieces. Uh, take a picture, tell him order, we can always call it to you. But what I'm telling you now, if you go outside and you try and buy it, you won't get it at this price. It's been slashed down, especially for all of you all today. Okay? So, I, um, well, if you attend my, our dinner and dance, if you attend our dinner and dance, yes, keep, November, uh, keep May 5th, no, but we may have a stall and we may show you more. So for today only, uh, Mr. Bing is at the back, he can help you. Okay, so moving on. Um, oh, beaded slippers are back in fashion. Don't, no need to think of Bohemian beads anymore. Huh? Japanese beads are just as good and you can get, you know, uh, it's very cheap now to get uh, uh, beaded shoes. It's, it's affordable and accessible. Um, well, like I said, Nyonya Sango has lost its appeal since uh, Bob's, my mother's time, perms became fashionable. Nobody wore Chuchu Sango. But, um, you know, in the olden days, um, if you look at Nyonya's, they actually wore jewelry, like your Chuchu Sango pins and all that on the hair. It's jewelry. And if they use flowers, it's either fragrant or small flowers. Um, look at that. I learned to do this as a child. 
and I made this for Roslyn. That's her. That is Bunga Tongkeng. Do you all know what Bunga Tongkeng is? Tongkin, Tongkin uh, uh, um, Jasmine. Yes, you can make soup out of it. But this is how I was taught by my grandmother. I will thread it, needle and thread, and it goes around her sangho. We do this with Watan um, Jong. We do this uh, not with Bunga Melo, actually, with the uh, the other one, the, the 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 smaller flower. So so um, it's always small flowers, fragrant in your hair. But look at how pretty Ang San Suki is. She's got lovely fresh flowers at the nape of her neck. That's lovely, isn't it? Fresh flowers. So, what will the future bring? Um, as I said earlier, um, Nonyas, we actually wore a whole spectrum of attire. It doesn't, you, you, you can wear anything, but um, there hasn't been one specific Nonya style throughout the era that, you know, the, uh, our, um, our Nonya uh, culture is a sh very short period. So, but there are different types of uh, clothing. It's acceptable in our multicultural country. We wear the Cheong Sam, we can wear the Koti, uh, we can wear the Baju Keda. It's okay, we, we just adapt. Uh, that's exactly what our culture is all about, you know? The Anonia culture is it, it, it's, it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Um, we assimilate and we celebrate many different diverse cultures. Traditional costumes of many old uh, Asian communities have remained the same, accepted as national costume. You know, like we are talking about the kimonos, the hamburg, the, 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 the uh, saris. No, it has it's accepted in their country, it's a national costume. But this is, Kabaya is not our national costume, right? It's, it's, it's just that the, not the, the Malaysian national costume. Lah. Um, but then uh, there are people who are in China, they, uh, they, are, they are reviving the Han Fu. Uh. Can you imagine? People are trying to revive the Han Fu. People do that, so let's try to do something. Uh, to move forward, we have to decide the direction we are going. Uh, do we retain some things? Do we discard some? Or do we create something new? Think about it. The young Indonesian ladies actually hitching up their sarong to knee length. Have you seen? In Indonesia, the young girls, their length are just knee length like a skirt. But here, some people are wearing it midi length. Midi length, okay? Uh, it's become a trend. Um, but uh, just, just to share something. Uh, in my mother's time, or when I was growing up, if you were to wear your sarong midi length, you know what the old ladies will tell you? Ah, you're working in the paddy field. Lah. You know? Oh, Imchuya. Is it flooding? That's what my grand my mothers and grandmothers would say, you know. They are so particular about the way they dress, everything has to be perfect. Okay? So I'm just sharing what you know what, what happened. So but now a lot of people are treating they they, they make the sleeves shorter. They make the lamps, uh, hems longer and they bring the kabaya right over the top. And I've seen kabayas full of embroidery and I tell myself, why bother? Why don't you just buy lace? You know, why do you want to embroider the whole thing? Buy lace lah. Anyway, that's fashion, okay? Uh, will it catch on? That's a different question. Um, I, do you all remember Francis Yip? The Hong Kong singer, Francis Yip, she's still alive. Um, I remember when she came to KL, she was singing, uh, I think it was Hilton Hotel, I can't remember. She wore a beautiful monotone pink uh, sun palette 
uh, kebaya that was up to her knee length, long knee length, and she appeared on stage, and she was stunning, and I was going ah, oh, but has it caught on? No, you know it was just she looks good on stage, but it didn't catch on. Um, uh, just a little bit of uh, personal story. I've been in the industry for kebaya industry for about uh, 20 years now. I'm retired. Mm, I have seen how technology has made sulam embroidery easier. You know, we have electronic machines now, no need the goyang one. Yes, but that machine has limitations. It can just do your normal, um, normal embroidery. But when it comes to the iconic, we call it cut-out lace work, you know, you have all the holes on your kebayas, that cannot be done with an electric machine. Eh? You have to go young. Eh? Okay? Th that, that cannot be done with electronic machines. And um, um, actually, electronic machines, uh, when we say electronic machines, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, it's not push button computer, you know, you know, push and then it will so. No, 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 no. The person, the, 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 the embroiderer still has to guide it along. It's just that you don't do that, you just do that. The machine does that for you. Okay? So, Somebody has to do all this, uh, cut and do that. So if you are buying a kebaya, many colors, complex, and it may take a few weeks to complete. If you pay two to three thousand, two to two and a half, three thousand ringgit Malaysia now for a customized kebaya, it's reasonable. Can you imagine one person can only make most two kebayas a month? At the most, however good you are, a very elaborate, she can only make two. And if you, she charges you less than two or three thousand, ma na boleh cari makan. She has to buy the cloth, she has got to do everything. So please don't complain if somebody charges you two to three thousand dollars for a very good kebaya. It's a work of art. A lot of sweat has gone in. So two, three thousand dollars for a kebaya that she can earn. You know, at the most, like I said, two she can make a month. That's not expensive. And you are talking about something that you can send to the machine, zoom, 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 and you are paying in the boutique for two, a few thousand ringgit, and you get it small, medium, large. Whereas a kebaya is one of a kind. There is no identical because it's all hand done. None, none. If it's hand done, it's not push button. Okay? So, sorry. Uh, this is true experience. I've been in a business, like I said, for 20 years. So, um, many actually want to wear the authentic sarung kebaya, but sorry, not everybody can afford that price or they don't know where to find it. How many sarung kebaya makers are there still alive who are still doing it? Very few. Or they don't know the difference. They, they just buy what is commercially available, mostly from Indonesia. So whether it's Kartini Stalka, Jawa Baru Stalka, Ajadi lah. So I'm here to tell you what's the difference, okay? Having said that, um, to keep this tradition alive, um, it is, are we able to do it at that price and at that? So, do we revert to anything goes on my generation? If it's so expensive, cannot afford what to do? Revert lah, anything goes lah, can wear lah. You're still a nonya, right? Right? So, because, you know, we don't have local embroiderers anymore and it's too expensive. Um, but uh, just just to back history, huh? you, our grandmothers who wore the Pajuk Kebaya Panjang didn't just change overnight Kebaya Panjang to Nonya Kebaya, no, Kebaya Pendek, you know. They actually, people have forgotten, they actually wore what I call Kebaya Lipat. They shortened the Kebaya. Okay, from the Kebaya Panjang, they shortened it and they call it Kebaya Lipat. They just fold in, no embroidery, you know, just fold it in, there's no laces, nothing. And they just turn in the hem, 
I'm going to bring it up, Madam, if you remember. It is too popular to certain Malay, certain people. Um, it's, it's because it's more shapely now. Um, and it's used as home wear. A lot of people actually do it, but people don't talk about it. And among the Malays, you know, when you have the kabayas, the Malays wear, it's just turned in. And it's just the kabayas. But the Chichi community, a lot of y'all also do that, just turn in kabayas. But people forget, have forgotten about that. So could we revert to that? Maybe have better fabrics, better uh, pattern drafting? Make it, no, make it more fashionable. So, and the other thing is, um, what I want to bring up is, you know the ladies, the Peranakan ladies in Southern Thailand? They have upscaled our original humble... Um, I showed you just now, the uh, Tesa. So, this is what the, in the Phuket and the Southern um, uh, Thai ladies wear. It's originally our kabaya but, uh, in Tesan, the one that we wear inside. The pockets are still there, two big pockets. And the Mandarin collar, long sleeves. So this is what the Southern Thai ladies are now wearing. It originally came from our Tesan. Oh, they wear it with the sarong? Yes, they wear it with the sarong. You know why? Do they have No. You know why it, in Indonesia, uh, in Phuket, a lot of the Chinese there were influenced by Penang. So they sent their children to school in Penang. They want to buy anything, those were the days. They actually import from Penang. So the fashion style and a lot of the uh, Chinese Peranakans in Phuket uh, actually have connections with Penang, me included. My family actually had tin mine in Phuket. Um, my father was born in Phuket, so did so was my brother. But we are Penang people, eh? It's just because of tin mining we were in Phuket. So the fashion, the food, everything is there's a connection of Penang. So this was originally our kabaya, you know, our tesa, what we wear inside. So this is what they wear now, and they use the. Uh, Eyelet lace, uh, group, um, brother only. You see the holes and the scallop edge. So this, can we do something for ourselves? The ties have upscaled it. Can we do it for ourselves? Then you don't have to have embroidery. Huh? No need to depend on somebody to do embroidery. You still non yama. You wear saru. Have you all seen this? If you go for a Phuket convention, if you're coming to join us for Phuket Convention in November, a lot of the ladies will be wearing this. A lot of them were. Okay? Actually, I bought this in Phuket, okay? Um, and, and now, the latest, they have shortened the Teng Sa, the Kabai Panjang, shortened it and used French lace, see-through French lace, and they wear it over this contrasting color. So the French lace can be red, you know, with the net, and then they have something inside that contrasting. That's what the ties are doing now. Um, which is what I was trying to say, the uh, kabaya tailors here are an endangered species. I can count on five fingers the kabaya makers in KL, in Malacca, and Singapore and Penang. So if you if you somebody tells you uh, they make their own, uh, be very very uh, honestly. A lot of them are actually imported from Indonesia. We don't want to sit at our sewing machine and sew for hours and earn 100, 200, 300 ringgit lah. We are so spot. Uh. Sorry, <laughs> I'm one of them. So, um, we need to train our young girls, our seamstresses, our um, embroiderers. If not, we will be forever dependent on the Indonesians. Um, okay, uh, coming back to me, um, 
in my business, I've actually tried to make wearing the sarong kabaya less stressful. I source for quality, ready to wear kabayas. I'm retired, I'm not selling business anymore, I'm just telling you. I source for ready to wear um, uh, uh, kabayas from Indonesia. And pekalungan sarongs, um, I also source for pre-embroidered uh, kabaya fabrics to customize. So what you see, this is actually uh, embroidered in Indonesia. I choose what I want, the color I want, I buy the fabric myself, and then I customize to fit me. So this was my business. Uh, no four figure. Huh? Those people who have bought kabayas from me, I never charge four figure. Okay? Um, what my daughter is wearing is also tailored from embroidered, specially embroidered fabric and I tailor it. Oh, she is different. She has got an authentic kabaya, made in Penang. Okay, that's different. Too expensive for me to buy that. <laughs> um, so um, I also, um, you know, like I said, when, when I get all these fabric, it, it, it doesn't, I can do this in a hurry, two days. You place the order with me, choose the fabric, by tomorrow you can come and collect the kabaya. It was so stressful. But if you were to order a kabaya from a kabaya maker, it may take you six months before they take a number, they'll tell you, queue up. There are so many people, so many orders before you. you know? So by the time your order comes, it may be six months later. So what I do is I shorten that time. Um, and then you actually see that's exactly what you want because when you send it to your kabaya to uh, a kabaya maker, you do not know exactly what you turn out. You ask for pink, there are so many shades of pink that will come out. You ask for green leaves, it could be different shade of green leaf that comes out. Uh, there's no guarantee unless you say, I want exactly this, you know. Okay, um, so um, the other thing I've done is uh, to make it easier. Um, I've sewn a panel. I've shown a panel. When I make my kabayas, I actually make it easier for you to wear your kursang lah, huh? Yes, Rosie. I actually saw a panel here, right to there. And with a press start. Look, I'm cheating. You can't see, right? But actually, I have a panel there. So once you put the press starts on, you put the spin your kursang lah. This is exactly what I've done. Okay? But you cannot go fat or thin lah. <laughs> ah, that's 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 it. If you once you have that, it stays that. But if you doubt that, you can just adjust. Okay? Um, so um, I actually do not encourage anybody to cut out their butted twist. If you have bought a really nice butted twist, do not cut it up. It's a work of art. Somebody has spent months, if not you know, longer, if it's a very good one, if you're paying a few thousand dollars for a budget to this, uh, the person has, you know, sitting down there, every single door, and you cut it out, my goodness, second bit just laugh. It's a work of art. So, if you really find it so challenging to tie in sarong, the next best thing, Rosie, your sarong. Um, I started this for my granddaughter. This is what she learned, how she learned to wear. Uh, it's one piece, okay? It's one piece of batik, look. But I have stitched it in such a way, Rosin, can you just wrap it up? It's, yeah, just wrap it on yourself, can you just? So when you turn it around, it looks as though, well, she's got two, but if you don't know, I'll show you another picture later. Yes, can you see her? See? 
You, you, you don't, you, 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 I don't cut out the sarong, huh? you can see the kaki is still there, the, the part, the, yes, everything is still there, but it fits in, I just cut out the top a little bit, so that's convenient, right? You don't have to worry, you will not be exposing your ties, it, it's, it's all, see, like what? The how you wear traditionally okay so um, well I've taught her how to do it she, she can do she can sew this herself now and actually she, I taught her how to make the kabayas too so until she finishes university we are not going to think about it she can do it already I pass it down to her so um, um, what I'm trying to say is um, we need to teach, we need to guide the younger generation to appreciate our traditional ways. It is said, tak kenal, maka tak cinta. Right? If you, if you don't teach them, if they don't know, how would they be able to appreciate it? So you must have that passion to pass it down. Um, if, if any tradition that is worth cherishing, it's worth making the effort um, not only to conserve but to maintain it. We, make, we need to make the effort now for the sake of our culture and our descendants. And the latest, with efforts of Malaysia and its neighbouring countries to bring the Kabaya to UNESCO. All of you are aware of that? for inscription as an intangible cultural heritage. We do not know yet whether it, 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 we have got it. Um, very soon we have kabayas of all variations. We may see a revival. You know? So it may not be necessary kabayas, but some form of kabaya. And um, to end this actually, what I want to say is um, being nonya is synonymous with having finesse and being cultured. Elegance isn't solely defined by what you wear, but it's the only beauty that never fades. That's said by Audrey Hepburn, actually. I'm quoting her. Lah, huh? um, are you still a nonya? This is a question. When there may not be any semblance of our past nonya fashion and our female ancestors may not even recognize us. You know, we have evolved so much. Yes, my answer is yes. If you are elegant, cultured and behave with grace, that's the beauty of being a nonya. It's got nothing to do with your race. It's got nothing to do with your blood. It's a culture. Behave like a nonya. You are a nonya. Um, any questions?